What is going on guys, welcome back to the channel for this really quick video and today I'll be talking about how choosing the right triple threat styles can boost your jump shots. And by the way, this one here could be one of my better videos this year, so if it happens that you like it, don't forget to hit that like button so the algorithm will help this video reach more viewers. And this one here could be a bit more technical than my other videos, so it would be really awesome if you guys can watch it fully so everything will make full sense. It's not going to be that long anyway, so let's get right into it. So first, let's have a quick recap of my last video because it is really important about this topic. Like I need to clear something out first. And by the way, if you already watched this video here, you can skip this first part, just jump around this part here. But if you haven't, just carry on with the video. So basically, I found out that each type of shots have different input lags. And the length of those lags depends on shot types. Catch and shoot as the quickest one, followed by standstills then off the dribble as the longest. I'm not even sure if input lag is the best way to call it, you can call it load up lag as well, or whatever, but whatever you want to call it, that's the gap between the moment you press the shoot button and the first frame that your shot meter appears. And to give you more perspective about it, in here you can see, when you hit the shoot button, your shot meter is not going to appear straight away. There's a gap, and I call it input lag. That's from here to here. And you can notice here that catch and shoot shots have shorter input lags compared to standstills. You gotta keep in mind though that their actual shot speeds will remain the same. It just happened that catch and shoot shots will register your input much faster. And by the way, this is not because of online latency, it's just a normal thing on video games. Like when you press a button, the game won't react straight away. There's always a delay. And this is by milliseconds, like you can't notice it in real time. The problem with these different input lags is not much players know about it and causes these problems. I'll show you these. Here's a quick chart, the blue ones represent the input lag, and the yellow ones represent the appearance of your shot meter. So imagine if you shoot standstill shot, and this is your timing, the red bar, and you green that shot. Now the problem is, many players think that if you do 100% exactly the same timing on the different types of shot like for example, catch and shoot or off the dribble, they expect that they will green that shot as well. But unfortunately, that is not the case. And here you can see, if you apply that exactly the same timing on a catch and shoot, since the input lag is shorter, it will overflow. It will cause you to have a late shot. And if you apply that exactly the same timing on an off the dribble shot, since it has long input lag, now your shot will be early. Now, on that exact video, I received lots of comments that some players think that maybe the length of that input lag will be influenced by your triple threat styles. For those of you who don't know, some styles will usually have the ball close to the shot pocket like this, and some will be messy and will move the ball around like this. So some players have the impression that if you press the shoot button while the ball is down here, your timing will be longer because the overall motion will be much longer. If you compare it to someone that shoots the ball while the ball is closer to the shot pocket. So some players think that it will cause your input lag to change. So let's have a test. In here you can see the difference on the ball placement is really big. Then I press the shoot button at the same time. And you can notice here their timing will be exactly the same. Yeah, the animation started at different points, but the game will sync both of them and at some point around here, they will look the same. Shot speeds and animations are just the same. Exactly the same. So now it's clear that no matter what your triple threat style is, the actual shot timing won't be changed. They are just different visually. So before we go to the next part, just want to invite you guys to like the video if you're liking it so far, and of course subscribe to tune in for upcoming ones. Now going back, now I might ask, Chutes, if it doesn't touch the actual load up speed or input lag speed, then how can choosing the right triple threat style can boost our jump shots? It is more on visuals. Like, if you choose a really steady style, there will be no misconception if you need to hold the button longer or not, it will be consistent. But if you choose a really messy style, now it will kind of mess up your mind because it will give you an impression that you need to hold the shoot button longer or shorter. And I might be wondering, then what's the cleanest style? Based on my observation and other players' opinion, it's going to be Embiid. You can even see here, it won't move the ball that much. And by the way, this one here is not really new. There's a lot of players that have been shooting better with Embiid style. Like lots of players really vouch about this, saying the same things. So basically, this video here is just to prove that input lag is not affected by triple threat styles and solidifies that Embiid is really steady and it can really help you. So for the summary, your triple threat styles won't boost your shots internally. The best triple threat style will just give you consistent visuals. In this way, you can have more consistent shooting. In my opinion, Embiid is the most steady one. 
So that's all for this one. Would be really awesome if you guys can drop by the channel for lots of other contents like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.